I'm Patrick, and I'm here to tell you how to create auto splitter for live split. So if you were trying to speedrun any any video game that can have the memory of it being read, create an auto splitter for it so that you can have the splits happen automatically without you having to press a button. Usually you would manually start the script by pressing number pad one and then to split, you would press number pad three. But with an auto splitter, you can do that automatically. As lies. So this is what an auto splitter script looks like. Someone created uh, an auto splitter API for you already. If you just want to make something simple like this, or you can hard code it by going into C. No, but. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to teach you how to create, create it using the .asl language that someone created. The way you start it is you create your state function, and within the state function, you what executable you're running. So for me, I'm going to be demoing Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix on the emulator. My version is modded to be in English. So it won't work for all versions of Kingdom Hearts 2, just specifically Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix modded to be English. So if you copy my code directly, it might not work for you if you're... Okay. For this executable, I run pcsx2.exe, you leave out the dot. And so what this will do is it'll grab that executable when when it's run, when it sees it. Right now I'm already currently running it, so it has, the script is in a sense running, actually. And within this state, it labels addresses, I say pointers, for, for the script to keep track of. So begin is at this address, it starts at .dll and adds this offset to it, and you now have that pointer. For bonus level, because I didn't write anything, anything in quotation marks here, it assumes that you're starting at pcsx2.exe. It adds this offset and this offset. And the, the number it finds after adding these two offsets is the number it'll keep track of. And so on and so forth for orb, or progress, berserker, and Rumbo rose. Initialization function is something that just happens whenever you begin, I guess whenever you launch live split, I should say. And all it does is it just lets you initialize your variables that you want to use. Throughout my split, I throughout my script, I keep track of the variable split and it lets me make sure I'm on the right split throughout my very long script so that I don't accidentally run this to be true when I'm actually over here. And the start function is the thing that actually begins your timer. All you have to do for to, to make your function actually start, when you return true, this timer will begin. And start is always running in a loop, it's always checking if it should return true. And once it does return true, it leaves start, and it starts going into its normal loop of updating, checking for split, checking for reset. Reset. For reset, it's the same thing as start. It's always being checked if it should be reset after starting. So these two functions, reset and split, are not being checked if it hasn't started yet. During reset, if it returns true, it'll reset if you've ever run live split or any sort of splitting program, you know that resetting just back to zero in it. You're essentially aborting your run. But for here, it's, it's automatic now. Split is where your logic goes for when you want to split throughout the game. For me, this is a very hard coding method. It could be better, um, but for Kingdom Hearts 2, not much. I could probably condense this into a for loop, but it would essentially just be doing the same thing here. It would be checking um, 
for me, I decided to keep track of your bonus level, and whenever that goes up, I split for you. So that's, that's essentially how you create your script. If you want more information on how to, to write it, I would highly suggest, because I doubt I did it the best justice I could, I would suggest going to the Scriptable Autosplitter documentation. Here's the link for you. I will also put it in the description on the YouTube video. And this is what the website should actually look like. And throughout here, it goes in full detail on how to create everything. Um, also mentions, mentions that everything you write within your, your actions is c -sharp code. That sort of thing. It gives you any little detail you might want to know about the script you're running. When I learned how to do this, I just read this whole thing and then I started writing it. So if you're going to do this, I would highly suggest going into here. And the next thing you need to do to, to create an auto splitter, the, what most people would say is the hardest part, and I would too, is actually finding these values. Now, the way you do that is you actually play the game, for one, and you run Cheat Engine alongside. I'm sure there's another way to, to find the address values that you want, but I like to use Cheat Engine. It has a lot of built-in functions that, that really make the process easier. Which is really, really helpful because the process is long and difficult. This, I spent an entire weekend trying to find these values. And without Cheat Engine, I would have given up on this project. So, without further ado, if you want to find these values, you start the game. I've already hooked um, Cheat Engine into PCSX2. Remember, you just go into process list, select it, and you'll start seeing the values. Remember, the, the way you usually want to use Cheat Engine is you just write some number, you scan it, and if you think the number changed, you scan it again, and you just keep scanning it until you find the address that you want. Now I'm going to skip that process and just go to a value that I've already found called Rumbling Rose. And so, say you've gone through this process, you've already found the address you want, you know what it does, you know what it changes, you like it, you want it to be put, you want it in your auto splitter. What you're going to want to do is do a pointer scan for this address and just give it some name. And it'll it'll run a pointer scan, and it'll find every set of every single set of offsets that point to this address. Now, because I haven't actually started the game yet, I'm still in the main menu. It's going to okay. You got lucky here. Sometimes you get lucky, and it just gives you um, exactly what you want. <laughs> this, this, this is what you're looking for, essentially. Sometimes it'll give you about three thousand values. And to avoid that, you just keep running the game, keep playing the game. Um, it probably worked for me because I've actually been idling PCSX2 for a while now. So at this point, it knows what offset correctly goes to the address you want to. So, you see here, it's PCSX2.exe plus this number plus this number. And that is exactly what I've written. And one thing I've noticed with Cheat Engine is that this number is one less than the actual number to, to find rumbling rows. So sometimes you might want to offset it by one. If I just followed uh, what the pointer scan gave me, I, I would write this, but this would be wrong. It would be in the middle of a byte. So just keep an eye out for that and look out for this. Know that what you're trying to do is find the offset that points you to this address. So as long as uh, PCSX2 plus this number plus this number actually gives you this address, you found the right offset. And from there, you are able to scan it and split off of it. So somewhere down here, I, I use rumbling rows. Yeah, right here. When, so the way I split when I run into Rumbling Rose for Kingdom Hearts 2 
is once it equals one, and I'm in the right bonus level, and I'm in the right split, or I'm, I'm or I'm, or in the bonus level, it will return true for me. It'll increase. Now you may have noticed that I, I wrote or current bonus level. I use bonus level to to track most of my splits throughout this game. Um, so when I go throughout the splits and maybe a split failed, I have it checked to say or current bonus level so that when I get to here, if this failed, it'll split twice to catch up. It's, it's a bad practice and I shouldn't have it there, but this is how my current script works. You may want to do something that says equals. That's, that's more of what you're looking for. Alright, so that's how you use Cheat Engine to find what address you want. Another helpful tool is the Memory Viewer. And what this will do is let you go to... Yeah, so browse this memory region. So now I'm in the memory region that Rumbling Rose was in. If I go up one, you can see the area. And for this is really helpful, especially in Kingdom Hearts 2, because the area surrounding Rumbling Rose is all of the Keyblades that you can get. And then if you go even further, you can find all of the items you require. So throughout the game, you might see this, this memory region changing as you acquire items or as you level up. And so as these numbers blip up and change as you play throughout the game, you can start logging them as numbers you would want to split. Alright, so that was how to create the script -ish, and how to run Cheat Engine. And if you, so now I need to tell you how to actually put it in. Say you've created the actual auto splitter. You you have your script, you're really confident that it's going to work. Or you're not confident, but you want to know what it does. You're going to go into edit layout, press this plus sign over here, go into control, and click scriptable auto splitter. And that puts another auto splitter in there. For me I already have one, but say I wanted to add another, I would do this. And then you go into layout settings and you just give it the path. For me, this is my path. The script path in there, and then when you launch, um, actually not when you launch, but it'll, once you put this in there, it'll automatically load in. And you can start checking to see if your auto splitter works. By default, you'll have some options that say start, split, and reset. If I uncheck, say start, it will not start the splitter for me. I would have to do it manually. That would actually break my script, but I could do it if I wanted to. Or one thing that wouldn't break my script, I could say don't reset automatically for me, and my script would no longer reset. All right, that's how you implement it. Now, if you want to see it, run, I'll, I'll give you some proof that it does actually work. I have a save state on the, the first boss fight, so here I'm just going to show you that it does in fact start automatically when I start the game, and then when I get to Twilight Thorn, it'll automatically split at that fight when, when I finish him. So I start the game, so right here is when it's supposed to split, I press yes, and the timer starts. So this is already pretty exciting, and when you want to see the next part of the split, I have a save state that just takes me straight there. So in the next three hits I do, this man will die, and this is where the split is supposed to happen, and as you can see it split. I won't be saving this split, but if I kept going throughout the game, if I had more save states to show you, I could go through each one and you would see the split working automatically without my input. And it would keep going until I killed finals on this and the timer would stop because the last split would 
there wouldn't be any more splits, so the timer would just end, and I would have my time. Without me ever having to press anything. So that's how you create an auto-splitter. And as a, as a quick side note, these are the credits I used. If I, um, the way I recorded this video was through OBS Studio. I just did this all in one cut. And I went, I looked at the scriptable auto splitter documentation. This is how I actually learned how to do it. You have to use live split. This is a component for live split. It, you can't write this auto, you can't write this script and then try to put it into a different split software. It was only for live split. And you can download it here. And here's the cheat engine link or cheat engine download link for cheat engine. Listening. Goodbye. <laughs>